Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 49. And this week, I want to show you how you can use Photoshop to remove those really distracting, blurry fence lines that you get in your pictures when you've been out photographing animals at places like wildlife parks and zoos. Okay, so before we crack on with the tutorial, just one thing to say, if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button. It's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work putting these videos together each and every week. So the only support I ask is that you just click on the subscribe button and also let other people know about the channel as well. Got it? Click on the subscribe button and share the love. Let other people know about it. Okay, so getting back to the tutorial then, the kind of thing I'm talking about here is when you're photographing animals at wildlife parks and zoos and you have to photograph them through the fence. You always get that annoying gray blurry fence marks going across the picture and nine times out of 10, it's across the most important part of the picture. So I wanna show you uh, one way, not the only way, but one way that you can actually remove that line and make it look as good as possible. It's never gonna be perfect, but I think quite quickly, we can make quite a difference to the pictures. Okay, let's crack on with the tutorial. Okay, so this is the picture we're gonna to use to show you how you can remove these really annoying blurred fence marks that you get when you're trying to photograph animals, maybe at somewhere like a zoo or a wildlife park. And you can see on this example here, the, the gray blurriness of this fencing is cutting right across our line in several places. Now, when we come to fix this, there's not one technique that's gonna do it. It's definitely gonna be a combination of techniques, but before we do anything, we kinda of need to look at it and say, kind of identify what are the issues that this fencing is now causing us. Well, when we look at it compared to the rest of the line where the fencing is going through, we can see that, well, certainly the colour has been changed. We can see that it's kind of washed it out and it's become a lot lighter. Definitely the shadows have become more milky and not quite so deep. And also, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on your screen, but it's certainly not quite as sharp as the rest of the line that hasn't got those fence parts going across it. So there's three areas there that we need to really concentrate on to try and get this looking as good as we possibly can. So, excuse me, the first thing we can do, or the first thing we need to do then really, is to get the colour back into the actual mane itself. Now, one way that I tried when I first did this was just to add a blank layer and get a normal brush, just a normal box standard soft brush with no settings in it whatsoever. And then just zooming in, and then when we've got our brush, we can hold down our Alt or Option key. And when we do that, the brush head actually changes to a colour sampler. And what we can do is we can sample the correct colour of the mane by clicking down and then painting over the lighter hair where the actual uh, fence has gone through. Now obviously that doesn't look real at the moment but we can change the blend mode of that layer down to colour. And when we do that, we can see that actually doesn't look too bad. If we just think about the hair itself, we can see that that has definitely picked up now the correct color. The only problem here is that the color we've painted on has also gone over into the shadow or the darker parts of the mane, so that's not working. But it's definitely something we can make use of in this technique. So here's what I actually did in this image, and this is what I found worked best for this particular picture. You may find that other pictures will be slightly different, but I think you're gonna be working with the similar kind of techniques no matter what it is that you're actually working on. So here's what we need to do. Well, we need to obviously paint that color over the lighter parts of the mane that are being affected by the fence, but we don't want to affect the shadows. So we need to kind of select the hair. Now there's a lot of different kind of tones within that light colored hair. And as it happens, we've actually got a command within Photoshop called color range. And that's gonna allow us to choose a range as you'd expect, of colors all in one go. So we're gonna to go to the select menu and choose color range. Now, when this first comes up, just a couple of things I wanna point out is that at the bottom here, it says selection preview. Now, when I first do this, I take it to say none, so that I can see a full, large version of my color picture. And then what I'm gonna do is I zoom right in, and as I bring my cursor outside, it changes to another color sampler, and then I click on a really light part of the actual first. So I'm gonna go somewhere around about down here. 
Once I've selected it, then I click on grayscale. So I can get a really good view now of the white areas, which are the areas that I've chosen, which I've actually picked. Now we've also in this color range dialog box, we've got a bit of a weird name slider, I guess, called fuzziness. It is an odd name, but kind of think of fuzziness as maybe, I don't know, range. Think of it as, rather than saying fuzziness, think of it as range. So basically the way we use this is, initially when we come into the color range dialog box, like you see, I've chosen a color. We then use the fuzziness slider here to say to Photoshop, look, this is the color that I want, but can you just help me out a little bit by choosing colors that are kind of near to that as well? Maybe some that are a little bit darker or some that are a little bit lighter. And the way Photoshop will help us out is by us moving this slider. If I bring it to the right, it'll look even deeper within the picture to really look for some more kind of range within that color to help us pick up even more. Or if we don't want it to pick up quite so much, take that slider way over to the left hand side. But I think in this example, if I bring it quite some way over to the right hand side, all those really light hairs within that part of the main are going to be selected. So I'm going to click OK now. And when I do, we go back to our color view of our image, our full scale view here. But you can see there's loads of these selections, these marching ants all over the place. Well, all I need to do now then is add a blank layer. Again, I get a normal soft edge brush with no settings in. I'm going to choose by holding down my Alt or Option key, a correct color for the main. So I'm going to click somewhere around about there and then I can come in and start painting over the main. Of course I can change the blend mode of this layout to color and we can see now I'm painting over that part of the main. Now you might find this a little bit distracting as you're painting with all these selections, these marching ants all over it, where well, you can press Command or Control H just to hide them. But just remember you've done that because it's very much a case of out of sight, out of mind, and you might forget you've actually done that and then Photoshop will behave very, very strangely. So anyway, we're just gonna carry on now. I'm gonna click choose different colors as I'm painting around the main just to kind of pick it up and blend it in so it looks a little more natural. So then I'm gonna press Command H to bring back the selection just to remind me it's there and then Command or Control D just to deselect. So there's the color I've painted on the main. Maybe it's a little bit too strong but I can lower the opacity there just to blend it in just a little bit better. And we can see now when I turn it on and off the difference that's made already. Obviously I'm going through this fairly quickly but you can see that already we're making like a nice difference there to that lion's mane. So that's the light part. Let's just keep things nice and organized. Let's rename this layer to light. The next thing we need to do is now work on these shadows because these are really, really quite dark. And then we can finish off by painting the color in around the rest of our, uh, of our lion. Okay, so to select these sort of darker shadow areas on the main here, I'm gonna turn off the light layer, click on the background layer, and then gonna, uh, go again to the select menu and choose color range. And just like before, when I first start off in here, we change the selection preview to none. I'll then zoom in and then bring my cursor outside of the dialog box into my picture and I'm gonna click on a darker part of the main. Once I've done that, I then go back to grayscale and anywhere that's white is now where I'm selecting. And again, I can use this fuzziness slider to control how much or how little I want it to pick up. Now, when we're doing this, ignore the rest of the picture. We're only thinking about the line here. We can get rid of all of this in the other parts later on, but I'm just gonna use the fuzziness slider now to bring up so we can actually pick up some of these darker areas. I reckon around about there is looking good. All right, we'll click OK. We then go back to our image, but this time, rather than adding a blank layer, I'm gonna maybe go and use something like a levels adjustment layer. And then what I'm gonna do is, rather than using, say, the mid-tone to darken down the image by darkening, sorry, darkening down those parts by dragging that to the right, that's a little bit too brutal. So what I'm gonna do is reset that back down to one. I'm gonna use this little slider at the bottom. Now, if you've seen a video I've done where I actually showed you how to create a sunset look with the shadows. This is the same slider, like the dark, the white point here, but I'm gonna drag this over and that's gonna be a much more gentle way of darkening down the image without it breaking down the picture and being a bit too hard on it. So somewhere like that's looking good. Let's press before and after. So we can see that's nice, the shadow, the darker parts of the main are looking good. And let's turn on that top layer now with the color of the main as well. So the two combined there, that's looking pretty good. We can actually lower the opacity on that just a touch more. 
So that's maybe uh, that kind of stuff there. I tend to find that when I do the shadow parts, they work best when they're put at the top of the layer stack. And now that I've done that, I think what I'm gonna do is hold down my Alt key and click on the actual layer mask here of the adjustment, uh, adjustment layer, that levels adjustment layer. Now you can see there's all kinds of different black and white and gray areas all over this layer mask at the minute. The only areas I want to be white are what we've darkened on the main of the line itself. So everything else can be black and be hidden out of the way. So we can either paint directly on the layer mask here to remove it or if we wanted to be quick we can maybe get something like a uh, rectangular marquee tool and just drag out some selections and fill those with black nice and quickly so we can just speed up our workflow just by getting rid of all that just there a little bit more on that part just there and then I'll just get my black brush and we'll just zoom in just a touch just to work on there all right, so Alt key, click on the layer mask again, go back to the full view. When we turn it on off now, we can see the dark areas are only on the line, which is what we wanted. Now there's more things to do on this particular picture here. I think for very, very quickly, what we can do is just paint in some color back on the rest of the line's body that isn't so affected by the shadow areas. So what I'll do is I'll click on the light layer. I'll add a blank layer above it and we'll change the blend mode of it to color, get a normal brush with no settings in there whatsoever, and we'll just sample on his body here. I'm just gonna hold down my alt key, sample the color of his body there and just paint that in just here. Now there's a little blade of grass here. I think I'd uh, end up cloning that out in the final picture, but just for now I'll, I'll paint over it just for the sake of it. Okay, so we need to do his face as well. So let's sample the color there, we can paint that around the face. Something like that's looking good on the main up the top here. Maybe a little bit on his ear. I won't paint at full 100%, I'll paint at 50% on his ear. And that's looking pretty good. Let's just turn this guy and look at the before and after so far. It's before and after, before and after. Liking the look of that. So the next thing we need to do, which is actually probably the final thing to do, is just to bring back the sharpness and the detail in the areas of the line where the fence line has cut across him. Because that's definitely softened that out just a little bit too much compared to the rest of him. Now I'm using Photoshop CC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all click on the uppermost layer, hold down my shift key and click on the bottom bottom layer. Then I'm going to go to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters because the next thing I want to do is now go over into camera raw as a filter because then I can use an adjustment brush. So we're going to go to filter and we'll choose camera raw. This will then send us over into, into camera raw where I can just zoom in and I'll get an adjustment brush and the only adjustment I'm gonna make on here is we'll leave everything at zero except for maybe the clarity just a little bit and the sharpness. Now, I'm gonna tick on the show mask and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint over areas in this red overlay where the actual fence line is cutting across our lion. So we've got these kind of areas here, a little bit on his foot there, a little bit on the back part of him there I think we've got, and just a touch on here as well. Something like that's looking good. Um, yeah, I think that's probably about it for now. In fact, we can just do a little bit on there as well. There's probably a line coming down that part of him something like that. So once I've actually outlined the areas I want, we'll take a tick so we can actually see what we're doing in real time now. And then I can just bring up the clarity just a touch and then the sharpness as well. So something round about there. We can just zoom in just a little bit more just to see when we're a bit more closer. So we can go back to our adjustment brush and we can see now what we've done. We can actually go to a before and after here before on the left and after on the right. So we can see here's the before and here's the after. You might not pick that up on your screen, but it's definitely added in a bit more sort of depth there, a bit more sharpness to our picture. So we'll click OK, head back over into Photoshop. And now I'll show you a complete before and after. So to do that, I'm just gonna to go to the image menu and click on duplicate and we'll call this one uh, after. Let's go back to the original image and double click on the thumbnail here of the smart object and hold down my alt key and click on the background layer. So that's now showing us the original image. But to see them side by side, we'll go to window, arrange, and two up vertical. So the left hand side, let's just zoom in on that a touch. So that's the before image. And the one on the left here, let's zoom that one in and you can see the after. So very, very quickly, we can actually make quite a difference to this image. Again, I've rushed through this, but it gives you an idea of the kind of thought process of what we need to do. There's three things that happen to be sorted out here. The color, the depth of the shadows, and then the sharpness. 
Okay, so there you go. That's one way that I found worked really, really well on this particular picture. Of course, Photoshop being Photoshop, there's gonna be a multitude of ways that you could possibly get a really, really good result, but that's what I found worked best for me. Now, I've only shown you on the lion for this particular time, but you know, if you wanna get it off the grass, then you'd only use the same techniques. You'd just have to use that color range to select the green areas of the grass that have been affected by the actual fencing and paint those back in, and then do the same thing with the shadows. That will make it look pretty damn good, I'm sure of it. As for the background itself, I doubt you're gonna to wanna to go to all this effort to remove all these fence lines off the line and the grass and then leave in a really kind of naff looking wall behind him. So I'm thinking about maybe putting a video to show you how you can also cut the line and the grass out and put them into a more interesting background. And that'll be in a future video as well. But hey, that's all for this week. Make sure, like I said, that you click on the subscribe button, share the love, and I'll see you next time.